Anytime um, a landowner or anybody out here comes across uh, a deer that's sick, I usually get a phone call on it. So um, I respond to probably 100 plus calls a year on sick or injured deer. Um, and a pretty high percentage of those in the last couple of years have, uh, have exhibited symptoms of CWD. Um, a pretty high percentage of those have come back as positive. So. You know, that, that's one thing with my job is, you know, I do get to see the impacts firsthand and, you know, see those late stage um, symptoms where the, the deer have really deteriorated and gone downhill and, uh, you know, are, are pretty much on their last days of life. So. When we fly um, deer counts in the fall, um, get a pretty good idea of what's on the landscape there and you know you see some you know good bucks that are going to um, you know be really nice bucks in the next year and come hunting season that following fall um, they just don't seem to be there and I've talked to a lot of landowners that have seen that same thing so um, I think if we don't get a handle on it um, that's going to become more common and widespread and um, we're going to see reductions in our overall age structure. Um, you know, those quality bucks that a lot of people are after um, are going to be tougher to come by, and we'll probably start to see overall population die-offs. I get a lot of hunters that, you know, CWD is just another disease. Um, it's not impacting our deer, um, and I, I get that with a few landowners. Um, but I, uh, I think locally here, I've seen people take CWD a lot more seriously, especially with our testing and they're starting to see what our prevalence rates are. And when landowners and hunters actually start seeing those sick deer on the landscape, um, it makes it a little more real. And uh, so I think we're, we're trending towards um, people taking it a little more seriously other than it's just uh, another disease to not worry about. Our hope is to really get good management on the ground and prevent it from getting to that level where we're actually starting to see the population impacts and, and playing catch up. Um, and, you know, our overall goal as an agency and, and most of the, uh, the landowners I talk to, um, their, their deer herds are important to them. Uh, they want to maintain that quality and, and want to maintain healthy herds. Um, so, you know, we we got to come up with good management strategies in order to, to accomplish that before we get into a position where, um, you know, it's tough to, to regain uh, that if the prevalence gets too high. So, you know, it's, uh, it's a pretty big threat to our, our deer populations and, and most likely the, the biggest threat in a lot of areas. And, you know, as, as hunters, our number one goal is to you know, manage and practice good conservation on those deer herds. So I think if we can come up with good plans and everybody can try to get on the same page, um, it's definitely manageable and we can come up with some long-term strategies that really uh, help us manage it and deal with it. We want to have good quality hunting opportunities and, and that's part of the reason I do this job too is it's all of our uh, um, constituents out there that buy hunting licenses. Um, I want to make sure that we do the best job we can to have healthy deer populations and they have the opportunity to go go harvest animals and uh, 
maximize that. We can come up with management strategies as an agency and change license numbers, but none of it will be effective unless we get landowners on our side and um, are willing to work with those landowners to figure out what works for them and, and the best options for the deer. So um, that's that's where a lot of my time is going to be spent now is is having those conversations with the landowners and seeing what um, they think their deer population is doing. Um, are they seeing more sick animals? Um, is the population decreasing or increasing? And then kind of working with them individually to come up with management plans that uh, help us accomplish our overall management for our, our deer management areas. Past year, or a couple of years ago, we got a centennial farm and ranch deal, 100 years of, you know, the farm and ranch in the same family. So that was kind of a neat deal. But yeah, born and raised here, lived right across the road from my dad. I, I like to commute, you know, the five, five minutes across the road. So it's a beautiful place to grow up and raise your kids. You know, part of living out here is you hunt too. You just grow up, you know, it's part of it. Farm and ranch and hunting, it all goes hand in hand. and and I guess we're just starting to see effects. You know, it's we've always had a healthy and vibrant deer herd, never had a problem to find them and hunt them. And, and you just start seeing, you know, you'd never find dead deer, you'd never find sick deer. And, and that's all starting to change, I think. You know, if you harvest a deer now, you're just a little worried too. Do you, do you eat the meat? Do you not eat the meat? I know there's no documented cases, but it just, you know, the fear trickles in a little there. And yeah, you, I mean, we've always had good meal deer hunting and you want, my daughters and eventually my sons to be able to do the same thing and you know it's just yeah I guess the effects are yet to be seen but yeah you hope that you know that legacy of getting a hunt right in your backyard and, and quality animals you know may may start dissipating we'll just have to see I guess you know you you claim a certain not ownership but just you know you're there you're raising the crops that feed the deer and you, you don't own them but you, you're also a big reason why they're here and why they're abundant right so it's one of those like i think private landowners need to be involved in the process to figure it out you know it's it's your land and you you know you want to manage all your resources from the ground the crops to the to the wildlife as well it all comes hand in hand we're gonna have to have the the landowners on our side um, you know we we can come up with strategies and recommendations but um, when it comes down to it the, the landowners are, are the true managers of our ground out here and the wildlife. And, you know, the majority of landowners, they, they value that wildlife resource and, and want to see them healthy. Um, so it's going to take, you know, a lot of outreach to figure out a plan that works for them and um, figure out how best that they can manage those um, deer herds on their property. do a little shed hunting around in the hills and last year uh, I found seven dead ones and I talked to Josh about it and uh, he said they're all CWD more than likely. Several years ago we put up all alfalfa and it got old and so we had to rotate it out but when it was alfalfa we would see no less than 50 60 head of deer you know in the middle of January when it got cold and now the last few years it's been 2025 I, I believe in managing everything, <laughs> you know, as much as it's you gonna, can. It's going to take the Division of Wildlife and it's going to take us too. Yeah, it'll take a team. I want to be able to hunt until I can't hunt no more and I want to be, my kids to be able to hunt. My son really loves to hunt and I want him to be able to hunt. And our grandkids someday. <laughs> someday. Someday. I think we're making some pretty big strides in some places. Um, you know, we're we're changing some license structures and working to try to get harvest in places where um, we need harvest. Um, so, and, and we have a lot of opportunity to to change our management and really come up with some of those out of the box ideas to um, try to effectively manage those deer populations and and keep them at a level where they need to be. There may not be and probably isn't a quick fix. It's gonna take 
years of management and um, monitoring to figure out um, what the best strategy is and, and what's actually working and what's not.